YouTube. Alright, nice warm day. Gonna go for a quick rip on the Duke. Let's see, I gotta zip my jacket, snap it up and stuff. It's a little dirty. I'd say it's a lot of dirty. But uh, I just put a new throttle cable on it. Old throttle cable was a little sticky. Uh, but yeah, these guys right here are new. Some dust on this thing. All right, sounds like she's ready to go. Of course, I did. Uh, I had to take the gas tank off to do the put the new throttle cables on. Get the bike out here. Get it all done. Everything feels good. Go for, ready to go for a test ride. I'm just pulled a choke on it. Just about to hit the start button, and I realized I put the gas tank on. I never took the fuel line back up. That would have been funny. It probably would have ran just long enough for it to, to warm up, get to idle, and then me get like a block away before I realized it, but at least I caught it before that happened. Other than that, put my glasses on. Let's uh, go for a putt, make sure everything uh, feels like it's supposed to. Wow, the throttle definitely is a lot smoother. Not as lurchy at all. Amazing difference, just new cables. My clutch felt crappy, my throttle felt crappy, new cables, everything feels like new. Cables. Yeah, I got band practice tonight, so this is just kind of a quick little tool around the neighborhood, I guess. quick story what I did this weekend so I've been riding bikes for a while I've only owned two street bikes and a couple of four-wheelers and stuff but I've been on a lot of street bikes been riding motorcycles off and on my brothers have had bikes and stuff but uh, never got my motorcycle endorsement <laughs> uh, you know I, I had my first bike when I was like 21 22 maybe and like I just never got my endorsement. Never got caught, never got tickets, never got pulled over, so never really had to worry too much about it. But, uh, so yeah, I went this weekend and took my class. Passed the class, obviously. <laughs> it was pretty easy, it was kind of fun. The only the only downside to the whole, the whole day was one, I guess two downsides, one, the, uh, the class was way the hell out in Silverdale, and from uh, that's out on the Olympic Peninsula. So it was about an hour and a half something or whatever from my house. And uh, we got out there; it was all nice and everything, and cool class, cool instructors, really crappy bikes, but you know they give you the bikes and stuff. But um, as soon as we're done with all the little written stuff, and we take the written test inside, as soon as we get outside and get on the bikes. It just opens up out of nowhere, like straight up, like, you know, raining sideways kind of stuff. Luckily, I had this jacket that I have on now, and I had my riding pants on, and I, my feet got a little bit wet because my boots had holes in them, but that didn't really bother me. I wasn't cold, but it was just, it was wet, and then it, the, the range, or the course, or whatever you want to call it, got so wet, it was hard for me to see the lines, 
just because of the glare of the water and the sheen of the water on the on the course. Oh, I guess the third bad thing was is that there was two different colored cones, orange or uh, red cones and green cones, and they're just like little inch inch two inch high cones, you know, those little tiny ones. And uh, sure, sure, shit, I'm colorblind. I couldn't tell the difference. So I, he'd be like, so yeah, start over by the two red cones, and and I'd I'd be like, you know, I, but. There's nothing wrong with being colorblind. You can still you can still you can still ride a bike, and they're not going to miss. It. But it, I didn't want to tell them I was colorblind. I don't know why. I was like, whatever. I'll just keep playing stupid. But but the uh, the riding test was pretty easy. The whole thing was easy. But um, so uh, right now, this is officially my first ride uh, fully legal on a motorcycle. Um. But, you know, I don't feel any different. If anything, like, the biggest thing is, if, you know, I'm not going to get pulled over unless I do something stupid. And if I do something stupid, I better at least have an endorsement. Because, uh, you know, if I get just, like, a cop pulls me over for something random and I didn't have an endorsement and I wasn't doing anything stupid, it was just kind of a weird thing, you know. It's like, oh, you know, oh, well, whatever. I've heard a lot of, a lot of guys just kind of getting away with it. But if... Uh, if I'm speeding or, uh, you know, shortcutting through a park or something or uh, doing this. Like, you know. Well, the throttle is definitely more responsive now. That's awesome. So yeah, that was, that was just a light tap there. She comes right up in third. I was barely like four grand in third at about 35. This thing's geared down. But third's still pretty fast, like compared to like a DRZ or whatever. Like in third gear, I can get all the way up to like, you know, 65 easily. Man, effortless wheelies. Amazing, just like a throttle cable. Well, two throttle cables because it's the push pull or whatever, but, or pull pull. But the uh, the whole bike just feels more responsive, smoother. Now, the, my biggest, you know, the only way I really noticed the throttle, I mean, you couldn't hardly even notice it unless you tried to move the throttle real slow. But you would definitely feel it in a corner when you were trying to make precise, slight throttle adjustments. Uh, the bike would get a little, feel a little too lurchy. There we go. But she feels good. Tires are warming up quick. A little bit of water on the road back there. Also, I changed. I just changed the spark plug. I haven't changed the spark plug since I've had this thing. I've had it about, I don't know, like a year and a half. Never changed the plug. So, and, and I, it was stuck when I got it. And then, you know, I took the air box lid off and like jetted it up with the stock pipes on it to get a little more power. And then I got the pipes and then jetted it again. And, but I've never changed the plug or checked it. Um, and uh, surprisingly enough, it, it didn't look bad. It looked kind of like a brown paper baggish color, kind of what you want to see, and uh, I, I was amazed. I thought for sure it was going to be all black and it was running too rich, or it was, you know, man, I know it's running a little lean because it always, it's really poppy when I, I down, but it's not seemed to do it. It's not doing as much now. 
It just sounds right. It sounds just right. More control on the wheelies. I'm not good at doing wheelies for sure, but definitely a lot more control on it now. Before it was just so on off. Man, I'm going to change that every year. I'm going to put new throttle cables in this thing every year. I should right now, when I get home, just order a new clutch and new throttle cables right now just so I have them because, man, what a difference. Good day to ride. New cables, new spark plug. Maybe it is, maybe it's maybe that has a difference too. The bike just feels like it's running a little better. It's pulling hard. It's pulling real hard. Yes. Yes. Bikes are fun. But uh God, I don't want to go back to the house quite yet. Let's go tootle around. We'll go tootle this way and then we'll put some gas in this thing. Sounds good, runs good. Uh, the next thing I want to do on the bike, just, you know, everything everything I do on the bike to make it more me and to make it, um, just get it operating properly. Uh, the next thing I need to do is set the suspension up. Uh, I, did, I did look up when I first got the bike, I did look up how what I should have like all the little dials and stuff set up because there's compression and extension and damper and whatever preload and all that stuff but it just told me how many clicks this way how many clicks that way whatever for for my weight but I never adjusted the sag in the in the rear shock and uh, I'd like to do that you know I think that would be a good thing to do I'll try a third gear one right here Chased it out. I wasn't really riding it. But yeah, she has the. I didn't even give it that hard. I didn't really go for it, and it came up. And then once I realized the wheel was up, it still has enough nuts to just kind of power it up. You just gotta bump it up. There's a bump up here that I went. Man, I don't. I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just ecstatic. Yeah, but uh, my buddy, uh, what was I going to say? Let's talk about something else. Let's keep the conversation rolling. Uh, I got a buddy that uh, I rode with a little bit, just a couple of small rides. He used to have a cruiser bike. Uh, we called it the Sea Hog. But uh, uh, this cat, Seth, that I know, um, he's looking at buying like a, a Suzuki V-Strom or, or some type of adventure dual sport bike. He just saw a V-Strom, he thought it'd be a good deal, and it looked like a good bike, so. But, um, so yeah, we're gonna get the helmet comms and stuff, and we're gonna do some riding, and hopefully I get some videos up of that, because, like, I really don't have enough videos of me without riding with friends and stuff like that. And I really plan on doing more of that kind of stuff. Uh, I did that one little ride, used that video, uh, with, uh, Eric and Burl, a couple of the supermoto junkies here in Seattle. Face, uh, Facebook group of like-minded super motarders. They're all super motarded. They all like to they all like to do trails and stuff too. I see a lot of. I don't post on there as much as as much as the other guys do, but they definitely seem to like doing trails and stuff. But also just straight hooliganisms. So yeah, I'm just chugging along right now, going 45 in fifth gear at 3,500 RPM, and it, and it'll pull out of it. So I can, you know, it's 
bike's pretty torquey. But the new plug feels bomb. I don't know if that's all it is, but the bike's definitely running a little better. Man, this is a crazy intersection to see what the hell's coming. I think I just my phone just rang. I guess we'll go swing by Hollywood. But anyway, yeah. So he's like, this thing's hard to do adventure riding on. I mean, it, it's pretty comfortable for me, actually. Yeah, I don't weigh that much. So the bike really responds good with me on it. And I, I don't get that sore on it. As long as we take like breaks every 50 miles or so. But um, we're going to try to do some longer rides. And, and if uh, there's some other spots we might want to go to, we might just trailer it. I got, we both got trucks or just meet somewhere like hey I'll meet you at the Walmart up in Bellingham let's hit you know Mount Baker Highway or something like that just cause like the hour and a half on I-5 riding north up there would just I mean like it wouldn't be bad yeah but whatever it's green stretch of road next to my house. raindrops over here a little a couple a few little ones I just need to uh, stay at the balance point. I get a little bit higher. I'm still chasing it. The revs are still climbing. But it's like uh, I just gotta 
I gotta find like a good stunt law and just uh, repetition. Nice secluded area where I got plenty of run out, no distractions. Hopefully some other people to ride with to kind of encourage me, amp me up. to home. Probably gonna have a burrito and drink one of those Mountain Dews. Yeah, I brought that down with the brake a little more. It's hard to, I don't know. the bike's running good. Let's bring her home. Bringing her home. Anyway, that was fun. Crack some fun wheelies and stuff. If I ran into first, didn't want to do that. <laughs> 